Fran McCaffrey has struggled in the transfer portal at times. He's also found hidden gems at times over the past few seasons, including Ben Cricky, Philip Rabracha, Bakari Evelyn, and perhaps another one as the Hawkeyes have added Ohio Valley Conference transfer guard Drew Thelwell. We'll talk about that in just a second. But for all you men's basketball fans, please take a second to hit the thumbs up button. Please like this video. This is something that uh, I don't do enough promoting the uh, like button. It's such a simple thing to do, but it does help us in the algorithm. Please hit that like button. It does help us. Please subscribe if you've not already done so. So the news that Drew Thelwell has not only committed to Iowa, he's now signed his scholarship intent, so to speak, with the Iowa Hawkeyes. That news became official from the university yesterday. He is a 6'3 transfer guard from Moorhead State. He's played four years with Moorhead State. And in case you don't know anything about Moorhead State, solid, solid program. In fact, they fought Illinois in the first round of the NCAA tournament just last month. Remember, Illinois ended up going to the Elite Eight, beat Iowa State along the way. That's a good Illini team. And Moorhead State was right with them through about two-thirds of the game. And then it felt like Moorhead State's Maybe their energy level, certainly their offense sputtered as the game went on and just didn't have the horses to compete with some of what Illinois offered as it related to athleticism, explosion, etc. You can find the game highlights on YouTube. Go check it out. It is an interesting watch, especially as you consider the fact that Iowa has landed Moorhead State transfer Thelwell. So 6'3", 185, according to Moorhead State. He's averaged about 11 points per game over the last two seasons. Three-point percentage dropped a little bit this past year, but 36% from three over the last two years. That's solid. All right, you'll take that. I think in 2022-23, he shot 38%, led the team. He did not lead the team in scoring this past year. In fact, he wasn't top three in scoring. That says something. I don't think that's a negative. Obviously, you want scoring, but we know France teams tend to have no issue getting the ball in the hoop. But can you have a guy who's facilitating, taking the lead on defense? Now, as it relates to Drew Thelwell as a defender, I honestly have not seen enough on tape to say, yeah, this guy's going to be a lockdown defender. Certainly, I'd talked about Tony Perkins, the upside, the ceiling that Tony Perkins brought as it related to athleticism and length. And I don't know that that was completely tapped into. I know people were frustrated with Tony kind of disappearing as the season went on in some phases of the game, but he was really good for them for a long period of time. That is a loss, but Drew will provide them leadership and experience in spite of the fact that he's coming from the Ohio Valley. By the way, the Ohio Valley has been a good conference as of late. Now, last two seasons, it's taken a bit of a dip. Keep in mind, Murray State and Belmont left the conference a couple of seasons ago. Those were two really solid programs. In fact, you probably remember Steve Prohm left Murray State to head over to Iowa State a few years ago, and then Belmont went over to the Missouri Valley with their success. So the conference as a whole has taken a bit of a dip. They ended up getting a 14 seed in the NCAA tournament. I mentioned that game against Illinois. I really tried to hone in on Drew Thelwell and watching that game back. And what I saw from Thelwell, again, he's not going to shoot a ton of jumpers, and that's okay. I was going to have plenty of shooters, I think, next year. I think that's fair to say. They lost guys who were not known for their jump shooting, like Tony Perkins, like DeSante Bowen, like Patrick McCaffrey. Ben Crickey is gone. He was more of a mid-range guy, but they bring in a guy like Cooper Koch. Price Sanford's a year older. They get Peyton Sanford back. I expect him to return after testing the NBA waters. So what I saw from Thelwell on tape offensively, good patience, especially when he got in the lane. He's comfortable with both hands. He had a difficult matchup on both ends of the floor. He had his shot at Terrence Shannon Jr., who... I don't know that there's anybody in the country that's as athletic and explosive as Terrence Shannon Jr. was this year. Thelwell ended up with 36 minutes played, made a three-pointer, three of eight from the field, had four assists, one turnover. That's a common theme. Really good assist-to-turnover ratio numbers for Thelwell. In fact, he averaged seven assists per game in conference play, 6.2 overall for the season, and that is actually top 40 nationally in assist to turnover ratio and top 15 in total assists in the country in D1, top 20 in assists per game. So really solid numbers for Thelwell. Does not turn the ball over. He's got good length, good athleticism. I think he's a little bit slender. That'd be my only thing. Like you compare him to a Tony Perkins, the physicality of the Big Ten will be interesting to see how he 
acquaints himself, but they did go up against good competition. Moorhead State scheduled pretty well in the non-conference. I mentioned the game in the NCAA tournament against Illinois. He got eight and four. They also played at Indiana. He got nine points, five assists in that game. Had seven against Penn State, eight against Purdue, Alabama. He scored 13 points. All those games were on the road except the NCAA tournament game, which was at a neutral site. So he's got experience against Big Ten teams, four different Big Ten teams just this past season, and um, a Final Four team in Alabama. So really impressed by that. He had some really solid interest out there. It sounds like Miami maybe was second on the list. He was scheduled to take visits to SMU, which is now an ACC school, and UCF, which is now a Big 12 school, and reportedly had interest, not sure on offers, but had interest from Michigan, Virginia Tech, as I said, Miami, TCU, Wake Forest, West Virginia, South Carolina. So all those are notable and really solid programs. Again, for a kid who's not even a top three scorer on an Ohio Valley Conference team, that is an indicator that people really like this kid's facilitating ability, the way he takes care of the basketball, and the experience is going to really help. Overall, when watching him on tape, he doesn't have the most natural outside shot, but it is simple, it's effective, and I think it's probably a more natural shot than Tony Perkins Again, I don't even want to use that word natural when describing what I see from him, but it's a simple shooting motion, and it will probably be effective. It's plenty quick. He's got good, good vision. That's really improved. He went from averaging 2.8 assists per game the previous season to 6.2 assists per game this season. That is really impressive. As I mentioned, good vision, type of guy who will routinely pass up good shots for better shots for his teammates, especially around the rim. He's got good touch with both hands. He's effective. In the fast break, obviously, Iowa wants to play up and down. And with some of the spot-up shooters, as I mentioned, the Sanford brothers, Cooper Koch, Josh Dix, Brock Harding, perhaps maybe he can turn into more of a threat and you can play uh, two, quote-unquote, point guards in Thelwell and Harding at times. That will help. And as I mentioned, very good athleticism. Um, can throw it down when he gets inside. Moorhead State finished first in the Ohio Valley Conference this season and, again, bowed out of the first round of the NCAA tournament. So, I'm impressed. Again, it's not just a guy who's going to fill it up. Not that Iowa couldn't use somebody like that. But if you think about what Fran has done in the transfer portal, and we've seen him miss on guys in the past, but typically the most successful guys that he's landed have been role guys who are willing to play physical and play their role. And I think that's going to be what you're going to see with Fellwell. Now, it's a little different at point guard, but Philip Robracha, Ben Cricky, Bakari Evelyn's an excellent example. Here's a backcourt guy who came in from Valparaiso and was really effective for Iowa, really helped them during a very successful season. I think you're going to see similar results from Thelwell, but more of an onus as it relates to ball handling, being the true point, sharing that responsibility likely with Brock Harding. And then you have to wonder, what does Iowa do after this? They're Right now they're at 11 scholarships for this team. They've got two to give out, potentially. They've got Cameron Hunter, the Central Arkansas transfer, set to visit. I think he's probably there now or he gets there tomorrow. So he's still scheduled to visit. That will certainly help if they could land him. But I would say overall, like Fran hasn't, at least not from the public eye, swung and missed on anybody so far this portal window season. And I think there's so many guys in the portal, so many big names. A lot of guys Iowa doesn't even try for. Not probably because Fran doesn't like certain guys on tape. But I do think one thing that Fran and Lisa and Kirk are all consistent with as it relates to attacking the portal is they want guys who are going to be a cultural fit. And you do have to trust them as it relates to evaluating that. They've done pretty good when being kind of picky with the transfer portal. And the only downside to what we've seen from Fran McCaffrey is that he's identified guys who he thought were going to be fits, and then he's just barely missed on them. And then you kind of have to settle for some other players I mean, he settled nicely with the guys I mentioned earlier, like Rabracha, like Cricky. But it sounds like maybe Thelwell was a little bit higher up on the list. If you could somehow land Cameron Hunter, that would help. I'd be curious to know, NIL-wise, what Thelwell is getting at Iowa. I'd be curious to know if he had offers from some of those other schools on that list. Um, but my guess is he's going to come in and compete for a starting job immediately. So congratulations to Drew Thelwell. He's a Florida native, got one year of eligibility remaining and he will help Iowa immensely. An athlete, an athlete from the transfer portal, that is a good, good development for Iowa men's basketball. Appreciate you tuning in, folks. And I mentioned a couple of days ago, I've got my uh, black and gold blowout, my Iowa men's basketball shirt on. 
one of our biggest fans, Doug Moore, recently suffered the loss of his mother. If you're interested in helping him, he's one of our big time fans, well-known fans here that calls into the show regularly. I want to throw up his GoFundMe account in the description. If you're willing to help Doug, please consider doing so. We appreciate Doug being part of our family here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Appreciate you tuning in, folks. Have a great evening, and we will talk to you tomorrow.